Now we move on to our uh, favorite Eric Holder. And this is uh, James Woods took to Twitter yesterday, and he's on a mission. James Woods on a mission issues hashtag Holder challenge, asks followers for help. Uh, Hollywood actor James Woods has thrown down the gauntlet to America's Attorney General Eric Holder and dared him to condemn the brutal beating of three white men by a group of black hooligans as a racist assault and hate crime. You might have seen the video yesterday. One of the victims in, I think it was a, a Kroger parking lot, was hit with pumpkins, actually. He was actually attacked by pumpkins. And uh, Alex had the comment there. The guy just literally laid down and took it, didn't even go down with a fight. Um, these kids going out there doing these attacks better watch it because one day they're going to pick on the guy who's carrying that concealed carry gun in it, and it could be anybody. And it's probably going to be the old man that you think will be the easy target. Uh, my grandparents one time, they had a timeshare condo in Florida, and some guys were messing with them at the beach. They went back up to their room. The guys followed them up to the room, started beating on their door, and it was getting dark. And guess what? They pulled out the revolver and uh, fired a shot through the door. Guess what? The hooligans left, didn't bother them anymore. And that's how you have to handle these kids. You cannot show any mercy. You cannot show any fear because you will get picked apart like a prey animal. Let's go into some of Woods' quotes here, some of his tweets. This is a direct challenge to Eric Holder. Are you, sir, going to Memphis, Tennessee to address the Kroger racial hate crime hashtag Kroger challenge? Uh, here's another one. I've never asked my followers to do anything on my behalf before. Please retweet my hashtag Holder Challenge to Eric Holder in previous tweet. Uh, where are you, Mr. Holder? Racial hate crime of any kind is an abomination. Hashtag Holder Challenge. There is no black in America. There is no white. There is only right or wrong. Racial hatred is wrong, period. Hashtag Holder Challenge. And you could read the article for the rest of them. The article's title uh, was in today's featured section. James Woods on a mission issues hashtag Holder Challenge. Ask followers for help. And while this is noble, I think we should be calling out Eric Holder on a whole host of other crimes. Uh, but going back to the racial issue, we have a clip from Alex Jones. This is a few months ago talking about how Eric Holder thought everybody was against him and they're all racist because they actually want him to account for some of the things he was doing wrong. Here's that clip. Insanely, Eric Holder has come out and said it's basically racism that people are treating him with, quote, disrespect when he's ignored congressional subpoenas for four years. And he says, no attorney general's ever been treated like this. I could dig up three today when I saw this clip in a few minutes online in the last hundred years that served prison time. The last one was John N. Menchel served 19 months and died in prison due to his involvement in the Watergate affair. He was sentenced to prison in 1977, serving 19 months. I mean, I've got the attorney general saying that never happened. Of course, this guy's as white as a snowflake, as bald as a cue ball and as goofy looking as a rattlesnake. The point is that that's all they've got now is race card. You don't like Obamacare raping the daylights out of you? You're a racist. Don't want to turn your guns in? You're KKK, Hank Aaron says. Or if you don't like Obamacare, you're, you're a racist, Hank Aaron says. Hank Aaron? So not only is Eric Holder a professional race baiter, as you've seen in his trips going up to Ferguson, I'm also going to tell you about how he likes to waste your taxpayer money. So he's a bilker. Um, he's also a gun runner. And he's also a cover-up crime artist. I'm going to explain all these right now. First article here. This is from March 25th, 2014 from Liberty Blitz Blitzkrieg. Eric Holder and the DOJ have spent millions of taxpayers' dollars on unreported personal travel. Oh, uh, yeah. There he goes. He's doing that on your dime, people. Despite his unique role, Eric Holder has spent the fat past five years taking absolutely zero action on any matter of national significance, except for race baiting. In fact, his major claim to fame appears to be that he has solidified the creation of a group of untouchable criminals known as the too big to jail class. So he's looking out for the bankers. So what does Eric Holder do in his spare time? You know, when he isn't cuddling financial oligarchs or running firearms into Mexico. Apparently, according to a recent study from the nonpartisan government accountability office, he likes to hop on government planes for personal trips at cash spare expense. Surfs up suckers. And you could read all about that in the article. Of course, he doesn't know anything that's going on in his administration. And back in 2011, CBS News reported this from Cheryl Atkinson. Uh, ATF Fast and Furious Attorney General was briefed in July 2010. New documents attained by CBS News 
show Attorney General Eric Holder was sent briefings on the controversial Fast and Furious operation as far back as July 2010 that directly contradicts his lying statements to Congress. I added the lying in. On May 3rd, 2011, so oh, almost a year to when he was told about this, Eric Holder told the Judiciary Committee he's not sure of the exact date, but I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. Wow. He doesn't know what's going on, but he's sure not stopping those guns. And then later, more memos came out that they were doing this to demonize the Second Amendment and go after your Second Amendment. But we're not done. Back in the 90s, there was this little thing called the Oklahoma City bombing. And at one point, uh, Jesse Trinity's brother, Michael, was arrested. And they thought this guy looked like one of the people Timothy McVeigh was hanging out with. So they basically killed him in jail, even though he had nothing to do with the Oklahoma City bombing. Well, Eric Holder actually turns out was running a cover-up of that murder because if people started probing into that murder, they were going to see what really happened. Here it is from 2008, Paul Joseph Watson and Alec Jones. Obama's attorney general nominee had a role in OKC murder cover-up. Leaked DOJ memos shed new light on the role of Barack Obama's attorney general nominee, Eric Holder, in the cover-up of the death of Kenneth Michael Trinidou, who was tortured to death by FBI agents after they confused him with one of Timothy McVeigh's accomplices in the Oklahoma City bombing. And the new twist in the story revolves around Trinidou obtaining leaked DOJ memos that indicate a flurry of activity around how to handle the cover-up of his brother's death. A key player in the cover-up was Eric Holder, who earlier in the week was named to be the nominee of the Attorney General. The Department of Justice memos, well, they're actually emails, and they're talking about Deputy Attorney General Eric Holder and what he was going to do to keep a lid on the story, said Trinidou, adding that the memos make it clear that an attempt to deflect press attention is the goal, along with claiming the investigation is ongoing in order to keep everything secret. So their goal was to just push out this investigation, just say it was ongoing so they can't talk about it, keep it classified. That is the M.O., of what we're seeing now, basically every agency in the government now wants to just hold everything secret, pretend like we're dumb children so they can operate with impunity. And that is what Eric Holder was doing in the case of Kenneth Michael Trinidou's death. Oh, I also forgot, he likes to brainwash people. In fact, we have a clip of him saying, hey, we're gonna brainwash people about guns. And we'll go to that clip as we go to break and we'll be back with more on Ebola and what else do we have coming up? And a vice principal who was arrested for carrying a gun legally. That's what happens in the new America. You're a slave. Don't forget it. It's the InfoWars Nightly News. Part of every day, some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality, freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.